Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are going to talk about valves. Okay? Valves are essential to hydraulics, like in pneumatics. Yeah? There are different types of valves. There are valves which can increase or decrease the flow yeah? to certain parameters, maybe because of pressure or something like this. Yeah? So there are stream valves, uh, flow valves. Uh, then there are valves which can simply allow or disallow the passage of the fluid. Yeah? For instance, a non-return valve, yeah, which allows running fluid in this direction and not allows running fluid in this direction, cuts off, cut-off valves. Yeah. And then there are, of course, uh, way valves. Yeah. There are, like in hydraulics, also two different basic principles. Yeah. There are, on one hand are the poppet valve, on the other hand there are the sliding valves. I will link the recording videos which we talked about in, in pneumatics. Uh, just for repeat, the, the poppet valves, yeah, they are closed. Yeah? If they are closed, they are closed. The sliding valves, they always have a little bit leakage. What this means, we will discuss afterwards. Yeah, they always have a little bit leakage. Uh, the ways of a sliding valves are usually very young. The operating waves, ways, yeah? the operating ways of a poppet valve is very short. However, it's very hard to operate uh, because I have to overcome the pressure, which is in hydraulics not that easy because of the high pressures. Okay? So, uh, and the pressure in, in sliding valves, they are balanced. Yeah? So I only have to overcome the, the friction and maybe some springs. That's it. Uh, dirt. In a poppet valve, usually no issue, dirt in a sliding valve will lead to increased leakage yeah, after the dirt has rubbed off the, the sliding faces and so on. Yeah. So, once we have decided which function the, the valve should have, yeah, there are still some parameters. So this, for instance, is a hydraulic valve. And this, also. <laughs> So you see a slight size difference. Look at the steps here in this big picture. Yeah? So there are different sizes of hydraulic valves simply. Yeah? Usually the size, sizes are numbered according to the connectors, which are at this valve, they are down here. Yeah? So this probably is a six millimeter hole. Yeah? So it's a size six valve. Nenngröße yeah? 6, NG6. Yeah? They are different, they are different sizes. Yeah, there are 4, 6, 10, up to, I think, uh, 105, everything is in standard. Yeah? So the size. Then there's also the pressure, the allowed pressure range. Here it's written on 315 bars. This, this is also standard, standard size. Yeah? I can use this valve up to 315 bars. There up to 630, they are standardized, yeah? so they are also low, like 25, 63 and so on. You have to check according to your, your pressure range. Okay? Then, usually I need a certain flow through the valve, yeah? and there are two different flows which are usually given. This is the so-called nominal flow. The nominal flow we talked about that this is a streaming resistance, so I have a pressure difference between the input and the output connector. Yeah? And if the pressure difference is 1 bar, my liquid has 40 degree and a viscosity of 35 square millimeters per second, then exactly the nominal flow is running through. So this is the point, the operating point for checking the nominal flow. Yeah? Depending on viscosity and so on, it might be more or less. Yeah. And there is also given the maximum allowed flow, or the maximum flow, which is at the maximum pressure drop, uh, maximum possible pressure drop, how much can really go through this yeah, in... Uh, well, it's usually not for application, yeah? this is just informational. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the nominal flow. Then, of course, I already said viscosity. There's a viscosity allowed viscosity range with each. There are things inside which need to be lubricated and so on. So there needs to be 
allowed viscosity, minimum and maximum allowed viscosity. This is also something we have to take care about. And of course the temperature, temperature of the liquid because of the ceilings inside. Yeah. So this is the things we have there. Yeah. The size, the pressure, the flow, the viscosity range and the temperature range. These five parts are what needs to fit our application. Okay. Now I show you on the computer how this valve, I have a sliding valve here, is looking inside. Huh? So have a look. So this is how a valve block usually looks like. Yeah? Not in real, just for explanatory reasons, the connections here are wrong. Yeah? I will explain afterwards. So this is now a valve block. The other holes here, one, two, three, four, they are just for mounting reasons. Yeah? Just passing, I can screw it somewhere. These holes here, they are connectors for the for the liquids. There's one at the bottom at my construction here, at my explanatory construction, and two at the top. And here in the middle, I have a hole. Okay, let's zoom in. Then we see, aha, uh -huh, it's not just a hole. There's a little bit something more inside. What is inside? Let's have a look and make this outer hull transparent. Aha, uh -huh, so this looks really not just a hole. Yeah? So there are one, two, three chambers inside, which are a little bit bigger. Yeah? And the holes from the outside, they lead to exactly these chambers. Yeah? Yeah? So how is this now internally connected? Yeah? Let's switch to the, to the connection. Looks like this. Yeah? Uh, you see, we have, we have some, some covers the left on the right hand side. Let's simply switch to a cut version of this. Yeah? So now it's cut. We also switch the covers. We also cut the covers open that we can look a little bit better inside. Yeah? So, and we see now, aha, there is some piston inside. There is some special form piston inside. If we have this on one direction, this piston, yeah, on one side, we can see the middle part, the middle connector, is now connected to the left one. Yeah. Here, because the piston perfectly fits in this hole, yeah, the stream is blocked. I cannot go to this. Yeah. If I move it to the other direction, yeah, then this side is blocked and this is connected to this, so this is a way valve and this is a sliding valve, you see, because this piston here is sliding inside the hole. And now you can imagine if here is some dirt or something like this, yeah, if we rub this dirt, we will here make scratches in the surface. Yeah? And if there are scratches, there is quite some oil passing. There's anyway, here is a gap between between the hole and the piston, there is a gap simply because it needs to be lubricated. Okay, it needs to be lubricated, so there will oil always run here between the walls and the piston. There will oil rush through. Okay? This is the leakage. We always have leakage, and on this side, if here is the pressure, it will always appear here the leakage. Okay. So we'll also have leakage here. However, this is not that good because if we have switched in this direction and this area here is full of oil, yeah? this area here is full of oil, I cannot move the piston in this direction because it simply is not working because here is full of oil and you know, the leakage has time to, full, full, to fill this. And if I want to switch, I cannot switch it. Yeah? So there is importance that we do have here some additional leakage holes where the leaked oil can pour, can run out. Yeah? So this needs to be pressureless. This is going to the tank, back to the tank, and the leak oil must. So every valve, every bigger valve, even has a leakage oil connector. 
If not, then it's in the tank line. Yeah? And here already we see the tank line should be really pressureless because the leakage oil is just running out. If here is pressure, it's harder to switch. Okay? It's harder to switch. This is a strange valve yeah? because this is really not doing something. Let's switch to a certain different type. You see, now, now this is a three-two-way valve because let's think this is the pressure line yeah? and this is the tank line. Now the pressure line is connected to the working line yeah? and if I switch, book. Yeah? Now the working line is connected to the tank. Yeah? Now the cylinder would go out and now the cylinder would go back in. Yeah? That's how this is working. Yeah? So take a look at the piston. Yeah? This one here, this fits perfect. Yeah? fits perfect into this broader area. Yeah? This is zero overlapping, zero, zero overlapping piston. Yeah? As soon as this is closing, everything is closed. Yeah? However, this is very, very tiny here. This, this ceiling interface is very tiny, so there is quite a lot of leakage. So there are also the possibilities of negative overlapping this would be would look like this yeah then we have on this side then it's open on all sides and if we go there then it's closed okay negative overlapping means the ceiling part of the piston is smaller than the chamber inside okay then there is also positive overlapping then this is simply broader you see now it's sealed huh? Both sides pretty much good sealed. This is the piston overlapping. However, there is also a switching overlapping. Here, if we have a look at this behavior, yeah, we have this, then the pressure line is connected to the working line, then everything is closed, yeah, and then the tank line is open. Okay? Now the tank line is open. In between, everything is closed. That's without switching overlapping. Yeah? We might have a piston, and I use now the same piston, yeah? but they are simply further apart. So if we are this direction, this is now connected to the, to the working line. Pressure is connected to the working line. Now let's move this. And now the tank line is already opened. Uh, the tank line is already opened. And now the pressure line is closed. Okay? So there's a certain, certain time until both, all, all connections are interconnected to each other. <laughs> this, the there are reasons for this. Yeah? So this here is smoothing. This here is, is, is switching rather, rather smooth. Okay. So here the pressure is dropping almost to zero. There will be a lot of pressure rush here through the tank line and so on. However, now I have pressure on my working element here. Yeah? Here is connected the working element. I have pressure there. Now the pressure is decreasing, slowly decreasing, because here I have a tiny, 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 tiny gap yeah this gap will getting more so the pressure here is dropping yeah and when we close here the pressure line this is even dropping further so the the relief of the pressure is gentle yeah okay here it's rough yeah because here boom, I turn off the pressure and then boom, I release the pressure this is tack, tack, yeah? knackig yeah this is snappy, or I don't know how to call it in English. More simply. Huh? The thing, whenever these, these edges here, it's control, these are called control edges, yeah? whenever these edges of the pistons yeah, 
are entering the chamber, something is changing, are opening, yeah? they're opening a gap. There are also pistons out there which have different endings, like this. Yeah? Then you see that the, the behavior of opening the gap looks different. Yeah? So here is just, just something edge to edge is broken simply. Yeah? So it will the, the, the characteristic, the flow characteristic will be different. Yeah? This is just done by, by changing the edges of the piston inside. Yeah? There might be not only uh, these things, there might be also some, some notches inside. Yeah? So this is just check check. Yeah? Now it's sealed, then only a small part is open. This open small part will be more and more and more and more, and then poof, full. Huh? See, there are notches around this, this piston. So, with the application or with the styling of the edges, of the control edges, I can also influence the flow characteristic during switching of the valve. Okay? And finally, those things here. Yeah? You know, they need to be lubricated. And if I have only a small way to travel, yeah, then there might be too less oil inside. Yeah? This might, there are also forces inside. This, bit, this might get stuck to the wall. Yeah? So there helps then to have some, some I, uh, here, things like this. Yeah? So here in those areas, yeah, in those areas, there will be an oil reservoir, and if this is moving a little bit, this oil here is lubricating the part. Yeah? So these little drills, these little notches, yeah? they will help that the friction is getting less. Yeah? So this, you see, there are a lot of tricks inside such walls, such valves. Okay? So this would be a 3-2 three -two, three -two way valve. Okay. How? I already said, this is not really looking like this. Yeah. This is not really looking like this. Uh, because let's just have again a look at this other valve I just shown you, I had just in my hands. Yeah. So let's switch over to the other part. So here we have this valve. Here you see 315 bars and so on. Uh, and here you see the four holes where we can mount them. However, you do not see the stop connector because simply it's not very practical. Okay? It's not very practical to have the stop connector here. Uh, so all connections are at the ground, uh, at the bottom. And here we have even four holes because we can see at the, at the sign this is a four two-way valve. Uh, there is a spring. You can even see there is this, there is this uh, cover, simply. Underneath there is the spring, that's this side. And the other side, here is an, yes, you can operate with oil. Yeah? It's hydraulically operated, so underneath here there's a small, a small piston. If I put here oil, this will move the, this will move the control piston inside to the other side. And if I, if I release the pressure here, buck, the, the spring will press it back. Okay? So this pretty much looks that way. So there's a P connector, pressure connector. This is a little bit different than in, 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 in pneumatics. So the, the pressure connector here is called P. Yeah? Then the tank connector is called T. Yeah? This was the airing connector, so this was the one at the pneumatic, this was the three at the pneumatic, and this was two and four, it's called here A and B, the working connectors. So this is P, T, A, B. Okay. Typical, typical application. I can open this cover that we can see a little bit. But it's, it's oil inside. Huh? This is... Maybe I should not do this. Ah, yeah. These are the, the holes. Okay? These are ceilings. We just screw it to a plate. And this is how this looks like. 
I also have some cut open thing here for you. This one. Look at this. Yeah, this is this is the piston. Yeah, and it really looks like in the drawing, right? This was actually a working working thing. You know, see, there is the chambers. There are the small holes. This is not a very big. This is not a very big uh, valve, of course. Yeah, this is rather small. However, you can see the piston in here working. So it really looks like that way. Sliding valve. Okay? Sliding valve. This is also a sliding valve. And for comparison, here I have a poppet valve. Yeah? This is operated by this lever here. Yeah? Well, this is a poppet valve. This is simply opening here seat. Yeah? This is a two-two way valve. Yeah, just what is it? Standard open. Close, open, close. Okay. This is a poppet, poppet valve, also hydraulic valve, also massive things. So this here, yeah, four two way valve, all connectors at the bottom. How is this looking inside? How is this looking? I can show you. I can show you. I made a little drawing. It's not a construction, but it should show the function. Okay. So here you see the block very similar to this block here. Yeah? Now at the top you only see the four holes yeah? and at the bottom zzz, there are these four connections. Yeah? Four connections, the ceilings are missing here yeah? and the four screwing holes. Yeah? This is exactly like this. Yeah? Inside there, there is still a hole. Yeah? Now with also some chambers. Now let's have a look inside how those connections are now really connected to those to those chambers. You see, aha, uh -huh, they are now a little bit more complicated holes. Left and right, they are still directly connected. And this here is the pressure line. This is the pressure line, and the pressure line is now connected with a hole going to the middle chamber. Yeah? And on the outside, left and right, there are two additional chambers, yeah? Yeah? the fourth and the fifth one, and those two chambers are connected to each other and, and is then connected to the other hole. This is the tank line here. Yeah? So this is the tank line. So the middle chamber is the pressure, these are the working connectors A and B, and this is the tank. This is the tank chamber. Okay. How is this now looking with application? You see this the hexagonal nut. Is this? Huh? This is just a cover with a spring underneath. Huh? I've made this that it looks very similar. So let's change to the cut version of this. Huh? And here we got it. Huh? Let's first use a standard piston. Yeah? If we have it in one position, then the pressure, this is the pressure chamber, is connected to one. Yeah? And the other connector yeah, is connected to the tank line. Yeah? So this is under pressure, this is relieved. Yeah? Now I move this. Now everything is cut off. Yeah? Pressure is cut off. I move it further. Pressure is now connected to this side. And this is connected to the tank, yeah, book. Yeah. This would then be the other switching orientation. Yeah. So I can select if you have your pressure or tank. Yeah. And you see, exactly at the position where the, the pressure is cut off one line, also the tank is cut off, and then book. This is zero switching overlapping. Yeah. And also here, if I just select a different piston, yeah? different piston inside, different form piston, then this would be one direction. Yeah? Also now the pressure is connected to this line, this line is connected here, yeah? a little bit further maybe, this line is connected here to the tank line. 
Yeah? Now if I switch, first the tank line is cut off. Yeah? First the tank line is cut off, and then the pressure line is already open. Now both are under pressure. Yeah? And now I open the relief line, the tank line on the other side. So now this with this piston, I first put the pressure on the element yeah? and then open the relief line. So this would be pressure pre-opening. Okay? There is also a different piston where I open first the relief line, the tank line, and then put the pressure to the other side. Yeah? Relief pre-opening. And yeah, you see, this is just the form of the piston. Yeah? Just the piston. If you take the same valve, exchange the piston inside, you have a different switching behavior. This is actually really how it is done, huh? just behind the different ordering codes and so on, they are just different pistons. Okay? So you see, there are quite a lot of ways how things are connected inside there. Huh? And this is also reflected by, by the naming. Yeah? Or I, I show you what I mean. Yeah? I show you what I mean on this, on this paper. So in our case, we had the connections uh, P, A, B, T. Huh? And if I do two things with a minus sign uh, in between, they are connected. So if I write this, uh, then everything is connected. Uh, P, A, B, T, in this position, everything is connected to each other. Uh, and if I want, To indicate that P is blocked and A, B, D are connected to each other, I would write it like this. Yeah? And if I want to say P, A and B, T, I'll write it like this. Yeah? So this is how the connections to each other are, are indicated just with numbers. Yeah? Just with numbers. Uh, or there might be even P is connected to A and B and T is blocked right now. So these, these are the names, the names of the, uh, of the valves, uh, of the connections. This is how you mentioned this. So, uh, like I said, there are different type of, of valves. There are different type of valves. Uh, so there is, for instance, also a pressure valves. Uh, so there are way valves. We talked about no way valves. There are pressure valves. Somehow reacting on the pressure. Yeah. So there are safety valves, for, for instance. Safety valve, valve will open if the, if the pressures get too high. Safety valve. Yeah. Then there are back pressure valves. Yeah. Was a back pressure valve. If I have somewhere a piston, yeah. cylinder, yeah. and here force is pulling, I have here, I can place here a back pressure valve, and this back pressure valve is breaking this. Yeah breaking this a little bit, back pressure valves. Okay? However, uh, this is why I didn't know the code brake valves, because they are brake valves. Huh? And brake valves, you know, if there is a big, big wave valve switching and suddenly pop, switching off and this is really clack, yeah? then I have a big pressure peak at the pressure line. Yeah, because it's simply switching off very hard. Yeah? So there is then the brake valves, this will dedicate this pressure peak and will relieve this pressure peak. Yeah? Just make this pressure peak go away. This is called a brake valve. Yeah, yeah safety valve, brake valve. And there are follow uh, sequence valve. Sequence valves. Uh, what is a sequence valve? A sequence valve is opening 
uh, the pressure system to another to another area. Okay, the the, the sequence valve is is opening if the pressure is in, reached a certain level then it's opening the next the the for the next things simply the pressure is putting pressure to the next sequence okay this is for instance used in old uh, automatic gearboxes yeah? there is a pressure and if the if the rotation speed of the shaft is high enough to produce enough oil pressure, then there's a little, little uh, sphere opening, and this is then switching to the next gear. Okay, sequence valve, uh, pressure valve, sequence valve. Uh, that's it. Yeah, way valves, pressure valves. Then there are of course the the cutoff valves. Yeah. I mentioned this at the beginning. Yeah. So this is, for instance, a non-return valve. Okay, cutoff valve, and then there are the flow valves. Flow valve. They are somehow managing the flows. They are really sophisticated, or can be really sophisticated in hydraulic matter. This is why we're going to talk about this in the next video. So next video will then be about flow valve, because there are flow control valves, and there are flow regulating valves, and so on, and what is the difference? This will be then the topic of next video. For this quite long and, 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 and hopefully interesting video, I say thank you very much for listening, and goodbye.